Okay, good morning. Uh, good to be with you today. Hope uh, everybody's enjoying the trip out here. It's been a, been a good uh, good week so far. It's going fast. It's already our Thursday prep day, so um, you know it's been a, been a real quick week, but a good week. I thought Monday we had an excellent practice um, in Clemson. The guys were really excited, <laughs> very focused after being off a couple of days for Christmas. And um, a long trip out here, uh, time change, all that stuff. Uh, Tuesday practice, getting acclimated, uh, practice fields, figuring it all out, uh, and all that stuff uh, was okay. But we were a little sluggish. Uh, yesterday was a great practice. And uh, so, you know, good to see the, the energy and, and the focus where it needed to be yesterday. I think the guys have enjoyed it. They've had a good time. Um, they had the Personator in there, Caliendo last night. I think they enjoyed that. And, uh, they've enjoyed having a little downtime to do some things in Arizona that they didn't get to do when we were here last year because it was such a quick trip. Uh, and uh, all of us as coaches have enjoyed it too. We had a good dinner last night with the Ohio State coaches, and, and uh, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, spending some time uh, with Coach Meyer and Shelley and, and their staff. Uh, but uh, we're excited. We're excited about the opportunity. The game's going to be here soon, and, and uh, should be a heck of a ball game. Any questions? Please raise your hand so we can get a mic to you. We're going to start here in the front row, left or right. Coach Tony Zarella, Cleveland CBS. Um, Coach Meyer was talking about your relationship with him. What do you guys talk about at dinner? If you don't mind me asking, do you keep it away from football? <laughs> well, all of the above. Uh, we we talk football. We talk. Uh, we were excited about. Uh, we talked about the Nike trip coming up in February. Uh, really looking forward to that. And uh, you know. So it was, uh, it was good. We talked about a lot of things. Uh, I told him I was reading his book, and uh, I gave him to sign it for me. Um, and we just, Shelly's great. She and Kath, they, they, they kind of went off, and, and uh, we had a lot of catching up to do, but it was great. I had a lot of respect for Coach Meyer and the way they do things. Uh, got to meet uh, a couple of guys on the staff that I did know. Got to congratulate Luke. Uh, I actually met Luke for the first time. Uh, he was. He had just been an interim coach, and uh, we were on vacation in Florida in the summer. Uh, I didn't know it, and we just happened to be in the same swimming pool watching our kids run on a log. And uh, I didn't know him, and he didn't know me, and somehow or another we got to talking like, you're Luke Fickle? And uh, so we, we started talking, so I was able to catch up with him a little bit, congratulate him uh, on his opportunity. I uh, got to meet Coach Shiano, I never met him. Uh, got to follow him a long time, so. It's, uh, it's good. Here in the back on the left. Coach Whitney Bradford of the WYFF in Greenville. Coach, you've got two big wide receivers that are here this weekend and did not play here, or not, did not play in the postseason last last year, Mike Williams and Deion King. Can you talk about what happened to those two guys, obviously all year, but now at this point in the season, yeah. give me for your offense. Well, I mean, <laughs> Mike Williams is a monster. I mean, he's a game changer. Every snap, when he's just, whether he gets the ball or not, he lines up on the field. He he impacts the game because I promise you the D coordinator is is hoping that it doesn't go number seven's way. He's just that type of guy. He is an uh, unbelievable football player, and uh, he's a better player this year than he would have been last year, and he would have been amazing. But I just think his mindset, his mentality, his appreciation for his opportunity, uh, the fact that he was able to sit and learn last year, and uh, I think that fire. It was burning hard and, and uh, intense for him coming into the season. Uh, he's had an unbelievable year. He's a very smart player, and uh, he's just he's a problem. I mean, he is a matchup problem, and everybody knows it. Uh, and he has a quarterback that can give him the ball. So uh, that's certainly a plus when you've got a guy like that on the field. And then uh, Deion Kane, same thing. Deion was, was a uh, uh, freshman last year. And obviously didn't get a chance to play in the postseason. He's had a great year for us. I'm, I'm incredibly proud of Dion and uh, just his maturity. You know, we, we challenged him, and, and he, he had to make a decision because uh, there wasn't an option. You know, and I'm really proud of him because he could have left once he didn't have to stay. But if he was going to stay, uh, he, he was going to have to change some things. And uh, he chose to stay and buy in. And, and here we are a year later. I'm, I can't tell you how proud I am. And it's so much fun to see a young person grow. And all of a sudden now, 
they feel good about how they live their life and their habits and so forth and, and scared over academically, you name it. Um, he has had an incredibly consistent year for us. It's been great for him to have Mike there. It's been great for Mike to have a guy like Dion there. Uh, for us to be able to roll those two guys in and out, uh, it's been a tremendous amount of production. You just look at the production at that position and the amount of touchdowns, um, they've been a heck of a, a combination. So um, it's been great. And uh, you know, hopefully it will bode well for us into this playoff. Second room, right? Hey, Coach, Kurt Kretschmar, Fox Sports Radio. Are you for or against expanding the playoff field to eight teams, and why? I'm against it. Uh, I always have been. Uh, you know, to be honest with you, uh, it's not the right answer uh, for a lot of people, but I mean, I thought the BCS got it right, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I think right now, I think we have the best of both worlds. Uh, I think that, uh, I mean, you got four teams. I mean, for years and years and years, they just picked it. And then they had the BCS, which I thought got it right. Now you got four teams. My big thing is, is I love college football. I love the fact that, like, you know, everybody thinks this is a big game, but I'm telling you, Troy was a big game. South Carolina State was a big game. Uh, whoever, uh, Wake Forest was a big game. NC State was a big game. Uh, Georgia Tech was a big game. Because if we don't take care of business, we're not sitting here. And to me, if all of a sudden we go to this, we, we have what a lot of people want out there, and that's called the NFL. And, uh, you know, now, I mean, to play a 15-game season in college football is incredibly difficult when you're managing the, the, the school and the academics and so forth. Um, it, it really is. It's a challenge on these guys. So I think something would have to change. I think that you would have to probably – do away with the championship games. You probably have to go to one last game. Um, but uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with ending your season with a victory. And <clears throat> if we just go to a, a total playoff, then there's only one team happy. And then the other thing is, is now the games don't mean as much. Now all of a sudden, you know, you because for us, we've been in the playoff <clears throat> for the last five, six games. Because once you kind of, if, if you have a, a, a decent start to your season and now you're in the hunt, every week's a playoff game. Every game is a playoff game. And, I mean, it matters. Uh, so I, I think that we have the right balance. I think it's great. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there that don't like the bowl games and they're like, you've got too many bowl games and all that stuff. You know, as a player, a guy who played, went to bowl games and coached for a long time, I think it's awesome for young people to have an opportunity to go and spend time. I don't care where it is, uh, to go and spend time together with a team and have a chance to finish their season with a win, to have that time to develop your team for next year, to have that time for spring practice. And, and uh, I think that as, if it goes bigger, we water it down. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, you, you're, you know you're in, you got these teams with three losses that get in because maybe their brand is strong. And uh, things like that. Um, and I, I think we have it right. I really do. And I think I love the bowl games. I love seeing some of these matchups. I love seeing Northwestern Pitt last night. I love seeing uh, Coach Fitz fired up to get a win in that last game and, and that time that he had to develop his team and, and to see those guys one more time. And uh, if that all goes away and becomes just a true playoff, then you have the bowl games go away and, and now you have – when the guys, when the season ends, they're done. And uh, so I like the intensity of college football. I like the, the, the fact that every game matters. And I'm sure everybody can argue every point I just made, but I've lived it, I've played it, I've uh, coached it. And uh, I think it's, I think it's, we got it right. But, you know, there's always going to be debate. You go to eight teams, well, the ninth, 10th team, it's just, that's never going to change. Um, but I enjoy the way it is. Any more questions? All right, at this time, we will open up interviews to all players and coaches. If you are